So in this video, we're going to edit our animation from Mitsemo to basically customize it and make it look like this. And we're going to keep all these organic movements from our original animation. So usually we want to customize our animation in a way that's more usable for our own personal use case. And in this example, we're going to use a simple walk animation and customize it a bit to get it to fit the scenario that we have in mind. Now, in this case, we are animating our walk cycle and customizing it. So he's holding a custom phone in his hand while he's walking, right? So we're going to restrict the movement of one of the arms here. And if I go in Blender and I have my phone model, I have my Android model with the animation and I'm going to go to my timeline just to see the animation imported fine and it's working. So how you would usually go about it is that you would delete the keyframes from one of the hands and just position it in a way that you want and then basically that's your animation edited, right? So this looks okay in some cases, but in most cases you're losing a lot of organic movement. Or the other way to do this is what a lot of people do is that they keyframe a bunch of times in different frames and they basically like make their own custom animation. Now if you're using Mixamo animation, I'm assuming that you don't really want to be like a full time animator and you're just trying to make it work with the animations that already are available so it's better to learn how to edit the animations instead of doing them from scratch because it's going to just take a lot more time to do that again and it's not going to be that organic so how would we go about doing this now if i go into pole pole and let's say the first thing i want to adjust is the arm let me take a look at the arm and what it's doing right now and if i look at the arm it's moving forwards and backwards so it's basically rotating and we want to limit the rotation as less as we can so let me go over here to the timeline and press Control tab to go into the graph editor now if i open my graph editor we see a bunch of these graphs and depending on your animation it might be a lot more messier than this so, for example, if I go into post mode and then I select all of this, you're going to see a bunch of these noodles. So basically, we're just going to simplify this and we're going to work on this in a way that's more easier to understand. For now, let me just work on the rotation of the arm and we're only going to isolate that for now. So, if I see we want to change the rotation, but we don't know which axis you want to change the first thing we need to find out is which values are messing with our armature and to do this i just go drag my window over here and drag my values to find out which one gives me a good enough result so that i can make the rotation that we want to limit if you don't see this panel just press n to bring it up so over here, I'm going to go to my Z curves and I'm going to press shift H to hide all of the animations right now. And let's find a pose where we want our arm to be. For the most part, let's say around here. Now, this is something I really like and I want all my keyframes to be somewhere close to here, not too far away. So I'm going to select all of my keyframes by pressing one of them and let's press shift s cursor to select it and then select all of them and changing my method from normal to 2d cursor and then scale it on the y axis it's scaling them depending on the position of the 2d cursor so now i'm going to scale down as much as i can and basically what it's going to do is going to limit my arm movement and make it more stiffer right so you can see now it's not rotating that much so once i have this part done i'm going to move my keyframes on the y-axis either up or down and i'm looking at it visually whatever makes more sense just move it up if you want it to go up or down whatever 
and then I'm going to place it wherever I want my arm position to be. Now you can mess around with this at any stage, it's the same principle. So I'm going to move my keyframes either up or down and I'm adjusting it while looking at my 3D viewport wherever I want my arm to be. I'm just going to adjust my keyframes one by one. For example, if one of the rotation is giving me the maximum good output it's going to give, I'll just move on to another rotation or another bone. So now I move to the left arm and I'm going to adjust its rotation. So first I'm adjusting the Z quaternion and let's say this is where I'm happy with it. I'm going to check if the entire animation looks good. So far, so good. Now I'm going to make it face more to the face. So I'm going to adjust the X quaternion, uh, sorry, W quaternion here and just adjust it to where I'm happy with it. Again, it depends on your own specific animation just find whichever value works well and just adjust the keyframes for that. So for like fingertips because they aren't going to move and I'm just going to delete their keyframes and then I'm going to uh, just reset their pose and position them however I want them to be. You don't have to keep all of the animation for fingers since they weren't even moving. It doesn't really ma make sense to keep it. I don't really have to keep the wrist animation as well. But just for like keeping it more <laughs> organic, I'm going to keep it as best as I can. Now press shift H to hide so I can isolate only the selected keyframe and then just play with it until you are happy with it. Now let's move on to the next element of our animation and that is going to be the phone. I'm going to place it as best as I can in the arms of my character. I prefer to do it uh, to do this at the beginning of the animation but it doesn't really matter because we're going to use a constraint. So you can do this at whichever frame. But just for consistency I usually do it at my first frame so once it is placed I'm going to add a child of constraint to the phone and use the hand bone as the parent for this and just click on the setting R so it goes back click on the setting set inverse so it goes back into this position and now it should move with my hand. So now it's restricted to this hand. Now we can further adjust our animation with the object in hand, we can analyze this better, how well it looks. And now basically we want our neck to look at the phone, right? While we're walking, we're looking at our phone. Again, I'm going to use the same method to find the correct rotation and then go into my curves and find the correct rotation and over here either move them up or down whatever makes sense visually and then make sure I'm happy with the position of this. So for example this looks fine now. I'm also going to position my fingers at this point and usually to do the fingers I just set their pivot to individual origins and then I just select all of the bones and just rotate them so I'm going to do the same thing. For each of these uh, fingers, I'm going to rotate them on the x-axis local, that's more faster to place them. And then I'm going to tweak this as much as I want. Again, I only have to do this once uh, for one frame because this is something that's not animated, it's just a simple pose.
so let's say this is something that i'm happy with now we can play the animation and we can see our arms they have much more organic movement and it keeps the movement of the animation from the start and it also has the organic movement now depending on your use case you can edit different kind of animations even blend different animations together and do whatever you want but i hope this video made sense and now you can apply this to your own animation or whatever project you're trying to do and if you have any questions just let me know